Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a horse, uh, or rather just the head of a horse. And what I've got here are two boxes. Now I want to sort of help some people out, they want to know exactly what the measurements are on these things. They're about five centimeters uh, on all sides. That is just a little bit under uh, two inches. So if you want to follow along, go ahead and get these lines in place. And what I'm going to do now uh, is begin putting down some of the basic guidelines for drawing the horse's head. All right, well, now this is just one line, but actually the placement of it is pretty crucial, so I thought I'd stop here and do a bit of explanation. Uh, this line beginning down here towards the, the second of the three uh, horizontal lines, gently curving up, and just right around here where these two lines intersect is where uh, it needs to come to rest on uh, this first horizontal line. Now, what I wanted to point out is it, it begins to rather sharply curve down. This is going to be the top of the head, and this point right here, uh, if you can look at the sort of relationship relationship where you are in this square, just a little bit off center. Uh, that's where this line is going to stop, and uh, in the next uh, a little bit here, I'm going to show you how there's a little protrusion here uh, where the eye socket is going to be. Let's go ahead and get that line into place. Uh, now this line here is very tricky indeed. Uh, once you get past this uh, protrusion, like I said, that is sort of like the brow that shields the eye uh, on the one side here, you're going to want to pay attention to the angle of this line as it heads down towards the snout. And it, it sort of bends in, uh, or out, I suppose, <laughs> as you want to put it, coming over here to touch this far line uh, over here on the lower square. Then it's going to cut back down, and just before it reaches that next line, you get a bit of an angle uh, that uh, finishes off the uh, the snout region here, for lack of a better word. I'm sure there is a better word, <laughs> but I'll be darned if I know what it is. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw just a few more lines here to uh, uh, complete the basic shape of the horse's head. Okay, so this line comes back up here, sort of finishes off this area of the snout. Then there's a, quite a straight line that comes across, and you want to pay attention to the angle of that, especially in relation to this line here. Just see how the two of them are at slightly different angles uh, as they uh, fill out this lower square. And then right when this line passes uh, uh, this line of the square, that it, it kind of curves out, makes a rounded area. And then the final thing you'd want to pay attention to is where the neck um, uh, sort of attaches to that line line right there. Well, um, let's go ahead and get the ears in place. All right, so this first ear uh, is lined up with this uh, vertical line over here, and it sort of falls neatly on top of that first line at the top of the head, its location. Um, just sort of pay attention to the basic shape there and its size uh, in comparison to the rest of the head. And this ear over here is sort of poking off at a, at a different angle, and so the shape that it makes, the contour line that it makes is uh, quite different uh, than this one over here. Well, it's time to place the eye. Uh, you can only see one of them from this point of view. Um, so let's go ahead and get that in there. Okay, so the eye is just a little off to the right here, not quite touching uh, that line. Also notice its distance from the center um, uh, horizontal line. The size uh, is important. Actually, the horse's eye is rather small uh, in comparison to the rest of the head. Of course, quite large compared to human eyes. Um, but um, the angle of it, it sort of is like an almond shape, and it is sort of pointing down. That was one interesting thing that I noticed. And we're going to get into the details of the eyes later on. And I was surprised to what degree uh, they actually do resemble human eyes in many respects. Um, but uh, one last thing we need to do is get the sort of nostrils in place, and then maybe we can stop with all this time lapse uh, and start getting into the um, uh, real time drawing. All right, well, the nostril of the uh, horse is actually quite large, and uh, what you've got here is the, you know, the sort of hole that goes uh, into, inside the horse's head. That sounds kind of graphic. He's got a hole. It's a hole going inside his head. But what I noticed was that uh, the, there's almost like a... Um, uh, seashell-like quality to this uh, nostril in that um, it, a line will come up here above, hopefully this is coming out clearly uh, in the video, and then it sort of begins to spiral inward uh, to create the area of where the actual nostril will be. I'm going to get into more shading later on, but I just thought I'd sort of um, give you a quick bit of shading there to help you see what it is I'm drawing there. Uh, now for drawing the mouth, um, I'm going to begin right over here that's quite near uh, to this line, and then begin to have it come out just a little bit so that um, you get a, a certain angle going on here with the, um, 
with the lip. Now once I've got this in place, I can begin to start working on some of these other lines that are really uh, quite important for getting the shape uh, of the horse's uh, snout in there. So this line comes up here above and begins to uh, um, delineate a, a region here that uh, I didn't notice until I started studying photographs of horses. Uh, you've got this very solid structure here, this rounded area down here, I guess would be, you'd call it the cheek or something, uh, you know, comparing it to human uh, facial anatomy, but there's this area down here that uh, tends to fall into shadow very often has, um, will, you know, later on you're going to see me add details here, and there, there'll be sort of like a texture almost of, uh, of different subsections down here. Uh, and I'm not going to get too much further into this, but uh, getting this uh, line in place here and sort of um, uh, anticipating that there's going to be a region here that's separate from the rest of the head, that's pretty important, I think, for getting the... Um, uh, the basic structure of the horse's head in place. Well, I'm going to sort of try to zoom in at least a little bit so that we can get into drawing the details of the eye. Okay, so as I said, I was surprised as I began studying photographs of uh, horses' eyes that there are uh, a number of similarities uh, between the eye of a horse uh, and the human eye. For example, um, very often you see a, a pronounced eyelid area uh, with a sort of fold of the upper eyelid. And then uh, you'll see uh, eyelashes. And what I'm going to do is just sort of um, put in a few lines here that uh, tell me where the eyelashes are going to be. The, re the rest of the eye is going to be quite dark, maybe partially in shadow, but I'm going to be, uh, later on, you know, when I pull out my trusty black Prismacolor, I'm going to be darkening in uh, this quite a bit. Now over here, we've got a tear duct uh, area, another thing that reminds me a lot of the human uh, eye. And uh, depending on the horse, you're going to see... Um, to one degree or another, uh, some form of a, I don't know if it's like a bag under the eye or some delineation of uh, form underneath. Not every horse uh, is going to have this, but I at least saw some photos. But one thing that seemed pretty consistent from one photo to the next was that behind uh, the area of the eye, there seemed to be an ind indentation of some kind that tended to... Um, not get so much light, you know, it would produce an area of shadow over here. And, uh, you know, I should just point out that uh, a video like this is, of course, only showing you how to draw uh, a, a horse's head from one particular angle. Uh, and I do not mean to say that I'm teaching you everything you need to know about uh, drawing horses. No, far from it. This is, you're just sort of dipping your toe into the water if you follow along with this. Uh, you got to study anatomy. Right? If you want to really learn how to draw horses for real, you're going to have to get into the skeletal structure, which is probably what, you know, is responsible for this indentation that I'm talking about back here, uh, shielding the eye, uh, perhaps. Uh, I myself have not uh, taken a deep dive into studying horses' anatomy. I probably should have prior to doing this video. <laughs> but i got a lot of things on my plate these days, people. Uh, so uh, anyway, the, just a, a, a little bit of a um, you know warning there to those of you who uh, want to get into drawing horses. You're going to have to uh, put a lot more time into it than just one video like this. Anyway, uh, you can see me erasing away this area where the ears uh, are, and I think just to make sure you can see everything I'm doing, I better refocus the camera. Now, as I looked at photographs of different horses' ears, I um, found that uh, it was a little hard to see the details of it because there is sort of hair on the interior uh, of the ears, at least for a lot of breeds of horses. And so in this um, place where you would expect, um, you know, the, there to be a, a hole of sorts that allows uh, sound to enter the ear, uh, there's maybe going to be hair on either side uh, that's partially obscuring. Uh, the anatomy of the ear. But coming up here towards the top, um, I want to get just a little darkness in that sort of defines uh, the shape of the tip of the ear. There's kind of an interesting uh, teardrop uh, type of shape uh, to a horse's ear, which I had never noticed really until I started studying uh, the photographs. And then, uh, as I said, this one is pointing off at a significantly different angle, and I'm going to put in a secondary line here that begins to um, 
sort of show the outer uh, surface of the ear uh, as opposed to the inner surface. And by shading in a little bit here, I think I'll, I'll make that considerably clearer. Uh, different horse breeds seem to have different degrees of fur along the edge of the ear. I saw some horses where this area would become uh, quite furry. And that would apply to this edge as well. But it seems like the very tips are not going to be very uh, furry, at least for most breeds. Uh, of horses. Now, while we're up here uh, in the drawing, uh, towards the top of the drawing, I'm going to go ahead and start to uh, indicate the uh, the mane, the horse's mane, and uh, this is uh, this area very often is a sort of a single clump of uh, hair. It depends on you know basically whether the wind is blowing it around or not. I think almost for artistic purposes, I feel like breaking this up just a little bit. And notice the length of the mane. Again, I suppose different breeds are going to have different lengths of hair, but it, it's going to come down towards this um, protrusion over here, and then uh, that's basically where it needs to stop. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have add a little bit of extra hair that breaks up the contour of the uh, the head itself. Maybe have uh, have a single strand come off, maybe being blown in the wind a bit. And uh, up here, also going to break up that contour line a little bit to suggest the uh, different sort of clumps of hair, strands of hair. This is I'm going to make this hair very dark, almost like jet black, towards the end as a way of making contrast with the rest of the horse's head, which I'm imagining as brown. Of course, it'll all be kind of gray because uh, I'm doing a black and white drawing here. But as for drawing the rest of the mane, happily, it's a it's a bit uh, simpler than I even imagined as I looked at photos, a lot of them anyway. Uh, very long, very flat, um, I guess sort of reminiscent of certain types of uh, human hair, people who have that long, sort of stringy, um, flat hair that doesn't curl at all in any way. Um, at least some horses have a mane uh, like that. And I'm not going to get too much into drawing the mane. I uh, really wanted this video to focus uh, mostly on the structure of the head, but uh, at least get some of it in there. And I guess while I'm up here I'll show that I'm going to do, as I broke up the contour there, I'm going to do the same thing here, sort of break up this contour. I think it helps to make it look more like actual hair, um, that it's not so smooth that each one of these is sort of got its own subsection a subdivision of a subsection that uh, is uh, breaking up the contour, making it just feel more like you're really looking at hair. Again, we're going to get much more into the details uh, of the hair later on, probably mostly in time lapse, I'm afraid, uh, as is so often the case with these videos. But I do feel that if you get the structure, the structural lines in place, you've got a big head start towards making a good uh, drawing of a horse. In any case, I am going to uh, refocus the camera so that we can get into some of the more subtle um, markings or um, surface detail that we see on the head of the horse. Okay, so you can see I took a moment to erase uh, the basic guidelines um, uh, because you really don't want to try to erase those later on after you start doing uh, more of the detail. Now, uh, this is uh, to me where you separate a casual drawing of a horse from um, a more detailed one, and that is where you begin to start uh, doing some of these more subtle indications of uh, structural um, lines and parts that you would see maybe just underneath the skin uh, of uh, the snout of the of the horse. And what I'm going to do here, you can sort of see me uh, creating a, a, a almost linear uh, area of shade that points down uh, towards the snout. And, um, this is maybe getting a little hyper-detailed, but uh, some of you may enjoy doing this. Uh, I noticed that quite a lot of horses would have some sort of vein uh, crossing right around this point in the uh, snout. That uh, the vein that is so near to the surface, just below the skin, that uh, it may cast a shadow and become uh, you know, quite visible. And in, depending on the horse, I don't know if it comes down to the age or whatever, or, or just the breed, but uh, sometimes you'll even see more than one uh, visible vein uh, in this area. 
And then uh, over here, um, between this uh, area that I just put in and coming down to the this first area that uh, I had um, blocked in uh, quite a while back, um, there's going to be a sort of a secondary area of shade. You know, the shadows being cast by irregularities, maybe is the best way to put it, in the surface of the horse's snout. And I think these little bits, these little areas of shade, are surprisingly important in terms of conveying the um, authenticity, the full horsiness of the horse is really brought out by these areas of shade. I think that uh, if you take a moment uh, to focus on, on these areas, you will be rewarded with a much more, you know, it will just really ring true as an actual horse uh, illustration. Now down here I found, um, again, it depends on the lighting situation, but uh, in an awful lot of horses uh, photographs, I saw an area of quite deep shade. Uh, down here and um, later on with the Prismacolor I'm going to go quite dark in this area, maybe almost to black. Um, but this this little area that I first uh, sort of roped off, you know, from the rest of the snout, um, this whole area is going to get sort of shaded in. And I began to talk earlier about how, um, the, you know, speaking of irregularities, this uh, area down here can have quite a lot of irregularities, almost sort of looking like wrinkles or something. Um, so that a comparatively smooth, especially over here, very smooth this area. Some irregularities coming across the uh, snout, but down here you may see some quite uh, pronounced, you know, almost looks like wrinkles on someone's neck or something, an old man's neck. And then uh, the area of the uh, the snout itself, I guess, you know, I'm tempted to refocus, but my camera only gets so focused on these things, so I think I might as well just leave it where it is. Um, the snout, I noticed, it was sort of a revelation to me how fully sculpted it was. I mean, there's, uh, like I said, it has this sort of curly Q spiraling inward structure. That I also had not noticed, but um, all the way around the edge of it, um, shadows being cast by, you know, it's sort of flared, like a permanently flared nostril. Uh, and uh, that, yeah, that was something new to me that I had, didn't really notice by casually observing. Horses, as most of us do, you just sort of uh, pass by a horse and think, oh, how pretty, you know, or whatever, and you're not really focused on the details. Now, down here you might see another secondary area of shade. Um, down here around the, uh, the mouth, um, maybe a number of different more wrinkly areas, but um, I'm going to actually come in here and try to make this a, even more clearly um, a slightly triangular area around the lip. I noticed some horses had this, and I thought it was sort of interesting. Um, and when I say triangle, I mean like the where the mouth of the upper lip is is at a different angle than this lower lip line, and so you end up with a, this area here, maybe just a little bit of a triangular like uh, shape to it. Um, and basically, I think we've got the the major details in here. Now I know that out there there are going to people be people who are real experts <laughs> in drawing horses, and I apologize to you if I've got anything wrong. I guess now that I'm over here, I'm uh, remembering that um, there you may be able to see a hint of like eyelash or something of the other eye, but largely that other eye is obscured uh, when you see a horse from from this particular point of view, which I feel is sort of the classic point of view, this three-quarter point of view, um, shows off the, the beauty of the horse uh, in the best way possible. Well, I think it is time for me to pull out the old black Prismacolor. Where is it? <laughs> I gotta go find it. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back, uh, refocus the camera so you can see the whole thing, uh, and just, uh, you know, get in uh, some of the basic um, darkest black outlines, and then I'm gonna come back and hopefully be able to spend a fair amount of time talking about the shading. All right, well, I've got most of the darker lines where I feel I need them to be. Um, towards the end, I'm going to be um, adding more shading of, like, the main. Like I said, I want them to make that very dark. Uh, but uh, for now, what I want to talk about is uh, adding shading to the uh, surface of the horse's head. And I'm going to switch back to my uh, Dixon Ticonderoga. 
And, um, you know, inevitably there is going to be time lapse here. I uh, can't avoid that, but I want to do a, a fair amount of it um, real time. So I'm going in, holding my pencil quite low uh, to the paper. If you've watched my videos before, some of you have seen me uh, or you know heard me say this before that when you low when you lower the pencil down, you hold it at a great distance from the tip, and you get uh, this very low angle. It's very easy to move it back and forth quickly and just sort of get a, a region of shade in place. Now, my uh, idea uh, for this horse's um, pattern, I guess, in terms of or coloration is that he's going to be brown uh, towards the top of his head and then uh, gradually uh, fading to white as we go further down the snout and then it's going to go dark again right at the snout. I saw uh, anyway a number of horses that had that uh, sort of a pattern. So I'm just very quickly uh, getting this into place. Going to be refining it a lot more later on to make it smoother and smoother but I thought I'd just sort of get this in place and then maybe begin to talk about um, how we can add more and more subtlety to the shading uh, in a more precise way. So at this point I'm going to move in a little closer to the tip uh, of uh, the pencil with my hand and that way I'm going to be able to get more control. And this is where I'm going to start uh, uh, going for more subtle effects of shading. Uh, let's in fact go ahead and uh, zoom in here so that I can show this uh, as best I can. So yeah, I think even more so than with uh, a lot of animals, the, uh, a drawing of a horse is all about the shading. Um, there's only so many lines, really, in terms of the structure uh, of the head that you need to get into place. You know, we got the eye, we got the outline of the snout. The rest of it is all done by way of shading. And um, so uh, you see me making small sort of circular motions of the pencil. Different people have different approaches to shading. Last thing I want to do is suggest that this is the way to shade. Um, this is just kind of my way of shading. In fact, I'll use different forms of shading from one drawing to the next. So, um, you know, if you find that little circular motions like this uh, just don't work for you, then, um, you know, experiment until you, until you find the approach that works. But notice how I'm uh, adding uh, increasing areas of darkness over here to the kind of to the right of the eye, maybe up around the temple. Uh, as I said, uh, pretty consistently in photographs, I saw just behind the eye a um, pretty pronounced uh, area of shade uh, caused by an indentation, I'm guessing, in the actual um, skull, uh, skeletal structure of the horse's head. But, uh, you know, if you, if you didn't get this shading stuff in there, I think you really... Um, would find that it somehow doesn't quite look like a horse. I think these little areas of shading are absolutely crucial. I'm getting a, another area right here that's just below the eye, a little bit to the right, and then we get back into this um, area that I tried to describe, <laughs> tried and failed to describe earlier, um, a, a sort of a diagonal linear uh, area of shade. Again, you know, uh, the shade is there for a reason. It's, um, you know, it, it's a reflection of the structure just underneath the skin. And as I said, uh, getting in, if you love going for detail, you're going to love this little part here where you put a, uh, a vein. Or would it be an artery? Somebody help me out here. <laughs> going across the snout of the horse. But as I said, um, I'm going to be also not just doing shading that is related to the structure of the horse, but also to the sort of pattern of the horse's skin, coloration I suppose I should say. Um, and uh, there's, uh, it's going to be uh, concentrating all the darkness. Uh, in my mind I see this as brown. It's going, you know, even though it's a black and white drawing, uh, the sort of brown skinned area of the horse's head will be all be up here uh, towards the top and then uh, getting lighter and lighter as we head down towards the snoutal region. <laughs> the snoutal region? Dude, that is not a word. Just because you keep saying it over and over again does not make it real. But I just love saying the word snoutal region. I can't <laughs> explain why. Anyway, um, I'm trying my best to come up with new things to say about shading. I know people hate it when I um, fast forward or, or time lapse through the entire shading area, but the, I do feel like you just reach a point where I feel like I've said it all, you know. And, um, a lot of people will request, you know, do don't do any time lapse on the shading. But what you're talking about is a, a two-hour video. 
uh, at that point. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating, you know. Uh, at this point, uh, I am going to probably put in at least another hour uh, or more uh, into the shading, gradually building it up. And um, certainly no one wants to hear me talk about that, but I don't think you even want to watch me do it, frankly, in real time. It is almost like watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to try to do an entire uh, video. I have managed to do, I did a no time lapse challenge uh, last summer. Maybe time to do another one of those. But I ended up breaking it into four videos. People will remember that. So you had to watch over the period of a month, basically, the same drawing every Friday. Such was the price you paid <laughs> to see real-time shading. Um, but you can see me trying to create a sort of gradient, gradual change from dark uh, towards the bottom, uh, gradually moving up uh, to light at the top in this area. I guess I'll call it the cheek. The cheeky. It's a very cheeky horse. <laughs> All of my English viewers are like, McCrilly, please, don't do the English accent. <laughs> it's, it's terrible. It really hurts our ears when you do the English accent. Um, and maybe that's about as far as I can go. I'll, I'll just sort of tell you, in fact, I'm going to switch briefly back to my trusty black Prismacolor. Uh, down here, um, pretty consistently, uh, at least with any horse being lit from above, you're going to get a, a, a pretty dark drop shadow uh, of the, you know, the horse's head against the neck. And uh, so now I think it is finally time for me to kick it into time-lapse uh, and uh, keep gradually building up this shading. Um, and uh, also you're going to see me go in, probably one of the last things uh, I do is go in and darken in the mane uh, of hair so that it, it looks like a, a brown horse with black hair. So let's go ahead and kick it into time-lapse and uh, finish up this drawing. <laughs> All right, well, there's my uh, video on how to draw a horse. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you thought. And uh, to my regular viewers, those of you who are about to leave a comment about, Mark, you forgot the blushies, just don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. If you want to, leave that comment. But for now, let me thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We've got Brody's Ghost and Miki Falls, my two graphic novel series, as well as Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2, my How to Draw books. I really do greatly appreciate the support of those of you who help me out uh, by picking up any of those books. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.